You will not die. But there is an old version of you that must die to step into a new version of you. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to have a breakthrough in your life. And to be a little bit honest with you, there's parts of this episode that might be a little bit tough for you, uh, but if you stick with me until the end, I promise you it'll be worth it and it'll all pay off. So uh, I was watching a movie not too long ago. It's called Honey Boy. I recommend it if you guys like Shia LaBeouf. And he uh, speaks in this, uh, it's kind of a, a rough movie on his childhood of being a childhood actor. And I watched it and whenever I want to Whenever I hear something in my life, I'm listening to a conversation, watching a movie, seeing a video, listening to a podcast, and an idea comes into my head, I'll put it inside of my notes tab and I'll look back later on and be like, hey, I could do an episode on this. And so there's a quote inside of that movie. In the quote that it's, you know, Shia LaBeouf is, is playing his father, talking to him as a child. And he said this quote, it says, a seed has to be complete, a, a seed has to completely destroy itself in order to become a flower. Let me say that again real quick. A seed has to completely destroy itself in order to become a flower. And so when you take that idea and you put it into your life, when you look at who you want to be, you might have to completely destroy, not might, when you look at who you want to be, you have to completely destroy who you are in order to become that version of yourself. You cannot bring an old version of you into the new version of you. You sometimes have to completely destroy who you are in order to create yourself into who you want to be. You literally have to become somebody different. And so when I think about myself, for instance, and you could think about yourself as I'm talking about this, because I know my story, you know your story. If I think about myself today versus who I was five years ago, who I was 10 years ago, who I was 15 years ago, who I was 17 years ago before I got into personal development and realizing that I was fully in control of changing my life and nobody was going to come and save me. I am a completely different person today than I was when I didn't have an idea that I could change myself. When I looked at the world as a victim and I had a victim mindset and said, oh, I'm just this way because I grew up with an alcoholic father and it's the world's fault, it's the government's fault. And I had excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse. When I look back to who I was, let's say 17 years ago, I have actually destroyed who that person was. I destroyed my habits. I destroyed my way of thinking. I destroyed my way of talking to myself. I destroyed my way of talking to other people. I have mentally, physically, emotionally, energetically destroyed who Rob Dial was 17 years ago compared to, to in order to build up into who I am today. And I want you to think about that because it's exactly the same for you. You have to destroy the person that you are in order to become the person you want to be. I had an identity of myself, of who I thought I was, that needed to be destroyed in order to build myself into who I wanted to be. I built a new version of myself. And brick by brick by brick by brick, just like building a wall, I built myself into who I am. And you can build yourself into who you want to be at any point in time. So you're listening to this podcast, you're in self-development, you're dipping your toes into the self-development thing because there's a part of you that thinks if I work on myself, I might be able to build myself into who I want to be. If I work on myself, I might be able to create the future in the, and the life that I want to. But the life that you want is absolutely impossible and will never happen unless you change first. Your life will not change unless you change. Your life will always be the same if you are always the same. Because your life and everything in your life, everything around you is based off of who you were in the past. And so if I can look at myself today, I can see everything that's in my life, everything that I have, everything that I am, all of the people in my life are based off of who I was in the past. That can be a good thing for some of you. That could be a bad thing for some of you. That could be, you know, looking at it and going, well, damn, yeah, I do want to change some aspects of who I am because I do want to change aspects of my life. And it's, I don't know how many times I've said this in the podcast. I've done over a thousand episodes, but so many times I've said this. The Einstein quote is to expect different results, but stay exactly the same as insanity. To think that your life can be different, but you continue to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results is absolutely insanity. Sometimes, and this is why it might be a little bit tough, sometimes you have to have a breakdown in order to have a breakthrough. Sometimes you have to have a breakdown in order to have a breakthrough. This is the benefit of 
life. This is the benefit of relationships, great relationships, failed relationships. But the problem with that is that humans resist change. The human brain will always resist change. You will subconsciously resist change. Always. You can consciously want change. You can consciously want a different life. You can consciously want to build a business. You can consciously want to have a deeper relationship with the person that you're in a relationship with. But change is always a threat to the brain. And so the mind will resist change because change means a destruction of who you are. You have to destroy who you are. And that alone is scary to the parts of your brain that are not with us in our old, 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 old parts from our ancestors 100,000 years ago, 200,000 years ago, all of that stuff. There's still parts of our brain, the amygdala, which is in, you know, in the limbic system, which basically is the animal part of your brain. There's just like survival, 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 survival is going to resist that. So you can consciously want to change, but subconsciously hold yourself back. And this is why, and I don't hear people talk about this enough, especially not in self-development. You can feel like you're at two ends of a spectrum with yourself. Like you can want to change so much and you're just like, God, I don't want to be in this situation anymore. But continuously, self-sabotage, 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 self-sabotage. Because there's a subconscious programming running in the background that's going to try to subconsciously self-sabotage you so that therefore you don't change because change is automatically seen as a threat. You will not die. But there is an old version of you that must die to step into a new version of you. In order for a butterfly to become a butterfly, it has to go into the cocoon as a, you know, caterpillar, ugly little caterpillar goes into a cocoon and it's got to literally completely transform itself to become a new version of itself. And so I want you to think about this as I'm talking. Are there parts of yourself that you're resisting the change? You know, you can want to, you can go, you know what, in order to change my life, I need to wake up and have a morning routine. But then when you hear the alarm go off, you're like, no, screw that, right? That's the little part of you, the little inner voice. I like to call it the little inner bitch. It's the inner bitch that needs to be stomped on in order to change your life. And in order to change your life, you have to completely destroy yourself. Life is a beautiful thing. There's beautiful things that happen. There's terrible things that happen. There's tragedies that happen. There's successes. There's amazing moments. There's terrible moments. But we have to look at it and through the lens of everything that comes to me is an opportunity for me to transform. Everything that comes to me is an opportunity for me to change myself. If I have a great relationship with somebody, that is calling me into a greater version of myself to show up better for this person so that I can had this relationship, to stay in this relationship, to change myself, but also to change them. I've also been through some breakups. I'm sure you've been through some breakups before that are earth shattering. And sometimes those relationships need to happen in order for us to wake up and go, you know what? I need to change. It can be that person's fault in many ways as well, but it can also be our fault in many ways as well. And our lens needs to be what happened to me happened. And this is what, one of my favorite quotes from Peter Crone. He says, what happened, happened, and could not have happened any other way because it didn't. Let me say that again for everybody. What happened, happened, and could not have happened any other way because it didn't. I believe that everything happens for a reason. I've gone through the ups and downs of being like, there's no such thing as fate. Everything happens for a reason, and then not everything happens for a reason. And I've gone through every up and down and nooks and cranny of my mind to try to figure it out. And the older that I get, the more I start to realize, damn, that thing did happen to me so that I could make a change. That thing happened to me as another version of growth that I need to step into. I was in a, uh, I'll be honest with you, I was in a psychedelic journey one time. Uh, I was, uh, yeah, I won't tell you what I was doing, but I was in a psychedelic journey one time. I'll leave it at that. And I saw this like visual of a flower, a rose, a red rose is what it was a visual of. And I saw that you know, a rose will bloom from the center. And then in order to make room for a new leaf to come through, the leaves on the outside must die. They must crinkle. They must fall off in order to make room for the other one. And life as a human is that. Life as a human is in order for that new version of me to bloom from the center, the new, fresh, great smelling version of the flower that is me, 
I must have other parts of me die off. I must have other parts of me that need to change, that need to go. There is only so much room on a flower and a rose. So in order for me to make room for the new version of that flower, for the new petal to come out, old petals that do not serve that flower any anymore must fall off. And that is exactly how life is. But it's really, really hard. So much of what we do is rooted in our identity of ourselves. So much of what we do is rooted in our identity. And if we don't have our identity, what do we have? And at that point in time, it becomes very hard for a human to figure out. Like I've gone through very tough times before that, you know, people in the spiritual world will call it dark night of the soul, where it's like in order for me to figure out who I truly am, I've got to go through some really hard stuff. And that is the world or the universe or God or whatever it is that you believe in presenting you with things that make you change. In order to have a breakthrough, sometimes you have to have a breakdown. And I remember there was one time, it's about four years ago at this point, I, uh, I started really thinking about what I do. And at this point in time, I was already in self-development. I was already a coach. And there was about three weeks where I remember I was like, it's just something doesn't feel right. I feel like I'm, like I'm, I'm leading from who I am, but there's a part of myself that isn't my truest version of myself that's still sticking around. And I had to go through this journaling and meditating every single day, every single day and be like, what is it that is sticking around that is not a part of my highest potential? And I need to get rid of it. I need to identify it. I need to get rid of it. I need to work through it consciously every single day and be very intentional about working through those things. It's like in order to build a new building, sometimes you got to destroy the building that's there. You've got to destroy a building and build a new building. That's the backbone of personal growth. The backbone of personal growth is you have to lose yourself in order to find yourself. You have to completely lose yourself and your identity and who you are and who you think that you are so that you can build yourself into who you want to be. You have to lose yourself to find yourself. You have to let go of who you think that you are so that you can build yourself into who you truly want to become. And you can see it as a blank canvas. You know, sometimes you're, you're painting. If you ever painted before, I've done painting before and I'm not a good painter in any sort of way, but I've painted and been like, what the hell is this? This thing looks like trash. And it gets to the point where it's like, yeah, this, I'm too far down the line of this canvas. This canvas looks like crap. I've got to throw this canvas away and I've got to go for a new canvas. I've got to literally put a brand new canvas on and start painting again. That's exactly how life is sometimes. So if you're looking at your life and you're like, you know, your life might be good. It might be great. And you just know that there's more potential or you might be looking at your life and it might not be that good and it might not be that great. And you know that you have to look at that canvas and go, oh, this canvas has to go. Like I can't just make changes on this canvas anymore. I've got to throw this canvas away and I've got to get a brand new canvas. I got to go to the art store. I've got to buy a new canvas and I've got to buy new paint and I've got to start painting again. Sometimes that's what is required of you from personal development is to be that way. And one thing that is very important that I don't hear talked about uh, enough in personal development, another thing is that sometimes you might have to mourn the old version of you. The old version of you got you to where you are. And that's a good thing. It's never a bad thing. It got you to where you are and it did its job, but it's got to go at some point in time. I remember I had this really deep meditation one time and I realized all of these fears that were in my way of my highest potential. And I had to mourn these fears, not mourn them in some crazy way, but almost like a mini death of these fears of going, you know what? These fears that I have that are holding me back, they are a good thing. They, I have these fears for a reason. They protected me for a really long time. Like these fears protected me emotionally when I was a younger kid and I was going through a lot of stuff with my father. These protected me. They're like my friends that have been with me for a really long time. And you know what? They're a part of my identity. They're a part of who I am. But in order for me to step into who I want to be, I've literally got to get rid of these things. So what am I going to do? I'm going to mourn these. I'm going to let go of them. I'm going to say, you know what? Thank you so much, fear of, of, of emotionally getting invested into somebody. Thank you for that fear because it protected me. But in order for me to step into new relationships that I want to have with myself, with people around me, with everyone that I want to impact, I've got to get rid of these fears of allowing myself to open up and be emotionally vulnerable to other people because I won't be able to step into that new version unless I get rid of it. And so I had this, this whole deep meditation of like, this is a fear I need to get rid of. Hey, fear, thank you so much for everything that you've done for me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for protecting me as a child. Thank you for helping me get to where I am because without that fear, I would not be who I am. 
and I love who I am, but I know there's another side that I want to grow to. So in order for me to get to my next level, I got to let go of you. Thank you so much for everything that you've done, but we can't be friends anymore. You can't be a part of my life. Change is not easy. Sometimes it needs to be mourned, but change is necessary. And the one thing that I know about humans is that progress equals happiness. I have uh, never seen somebody that is in true alignment with who they feel like they need to be in this world and what they need to do in this world. I've never seen somebody that's in alignment with who they need to be and they're making progress day after day after day, even if it's just a tiny bit of progress and they're having real progression. I've never seen somebody who is making progress towards the life that they want that is unhappy. Progress equals happiness. And so I want you to realize that deep down inside of you, there is a version of you that is, you are like a flower. There is a version of you that wants to bloom, that wants to come through, but there's just not enough room on the rose anymore. And so in order for that side to bloom, you've got to let some of the pieces, some of the petals die. It might be fears, it might be thoughts, it might be identity shifts that you need to have. And you need to look at them and say, thank you for being here. Thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you for this relationship that we have. Thank you for all of the perspective that you've given me, but it is time for us to break up. We can no longer be friends. I got to let you go. And you've got to let go of those things to step into a new version of yourself. To loop this all back around, I'm going to leave you the exact same way that I started you with this quote. A seed has to completely destroy itself in order to become a flower. So if you want to become a flower and you want to grow into that version of you, you have to ask yourself what pieces of me need to be destroyed so that I can step into my true potential. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Do you follow your dreams or do you watch Netflix? Do you work for the business that you want to create or do you scroll on Instagram? 